All right, so listen to this shit. I went into fucking Guitar Center for like the first time in years. I never go in there, but my wife was around the corner, you know, taking my lovely daughter to some doctor's appointment. You know, whenever she goes over there, she, my daughter cries and stuff. I don't like it. I don't like it. I know she comes out better. I know the doctor's amazing. I don't like going over there, you know, you know. I just don't, you know, your daughter gets shots and shit or whatever. By the way, we did the total immune thing, and my daughter's fine, by the way. I, we, we did all of that shit, thank God, because everyone fucking was scaring the shit out of you. Like, don't, don't fucking get them vaccinated for the mumps. That's going to cause this. It's going to cause that. And what I finally did was I realized everybody telling me that none of them were wearing lab coats and none of them had medical degrees framed in pictures behind me. And I said, I'm going to roll the dice with the person that went to school for this shit. And we did. And she's fine. She's totally alert, smiles and all that type of shit. There was nothing bad happened. Thank fucking Christ. But I don't like to be there when that shit goes down. So I just said, listen, I'm going to fucking I'll be around the corner. I'm going to go buy some drumsticks, blah, 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 blah. So I walk into Guitar Santa. And I'm there right as it's. 10 minutes before it opens it finally opens and i go upstairs to their drum department you know because they always they always banish drums to the back of the music they're always like go oh, fuck yourself right guitar is the hot chick you know or it sort of used to be now i'm finding the electronics all this that whole generation of like dj music and all that shit is like it that's becoming coming up more to the, the front of the store or becoming a larger surface area of the store which is another thing making me feel old. Other than all these people that, you know, were, I remember, like, they were young. That's what I'm just trying to say. They were, like, young when I was young. They were, like, in their 20s and shit. And now they've lived a full life and are dead. And I'm like, how the fuck does that happen? It's like, well, Bill, you're 49. In 20 years, you can be 69. You'll be pushing 70. That's how fast it fucking goes. So, um,. I don't know what the fuck my point was. Jesus Christ, am I going to die in this week? Um, what's I saying? Oh, yeah, so I, I go over to the fucking guitar center, and uh, I walk in. So I go upstairs to buy some drumsticks, and I'm there so fucking early, there's, like, nobody there. So I walk up, and I grab my, my drumsticks that I, I always get, you know, get a 5B, right? And I fucking, uh, well, I'm going to try out the electronic drum kits. You know what I mean? They got that sick-ass Roland one that has, like, literally like a, a regular acoustic-looking bass drum. I was fucking around on that thing. That thing's amazing. Oh, my God. If you want to ever feel like you're ready to play a fucking arena, sit down on one of those fucking Roland kits. And this is not free advertising. I'm just calling a spade a spade. They're fucking unbelievable. So, um, anyways... I'm looking around, and I sit behind this one kid, and I go to hit the bass drum, and they got this head on it that looks like a regular head, and it barely makes any noise. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this technology? I didn't know this existed. And um, then I was looking, and they had the little Questlove breakbeat kit, and then they had another one, like an upgraded version of that, which was the, uh, the sonar kit. And I was like, oh, fuck, look at these little ass things. And then they got these heads that make no fucking noise, Right? What the fuck? So I, I just, I don't know. I just started looking, and I'm like, Father's Day. Father's Day's coming up this weekend. How about happy Father's Day to me? Because I got one of those, you know, uh, in my garage, I got this DW, like those practice pad kits, and those things fucking suck. You can't get through a song without something falling off. They just suck. I, I fucking hate the thing, all right? I want to get rid of it. So I'm sitting there going, all right, I ordered a drum kit. And I have a studio space ready to go, but I didn't realize, I thought I could just go down and get the drum kit, but the color I wanted, I had to order it, and it's not going to be here for fucking two months. So now what do I do? What do I do in the meantime? And then suddenly I get this idea, I go, I know, I'm going to buy one of these little fucking martini kits here, all right? I'll keep the regular heads on, and I'll just play in the studio space on the small kit, and then when my real kit comes, I'll just get rid of the DW one in my garage and put the silent heads on it. I can just practice on that when I don't have time to drive over to the fucking little studio space. This is perfect. So then I was like, what do I do? What do I get? The Ludwig by American Questlove or the Sonar kit? 
Phil Rudd, ACDC, Steve Smith, right? Benny Greb, all these monsters play on these fucking things. And um, I actually ended up going with the sonar kit. Uh, bass drum was a little bit deeper. The floor time wasn't a 13. It was a 14. And uh, it was a badass little bebop kind of kit. And I've, I've gone off the fucking rails listening to jazz drummers. I never understood it. And now with my great drum teacher and everything, I'm starting to understand it to the point. If I saw you the text messaging that I had, the, the drum nerd text messaging that I had with um, my, uh, my drum teacher. Oh, before I say that, by the way, what is so amazing about getting rid of that John Bonham setup that I had is now the whole world of what the fuck do I want to play has opened up. And I don't have any drum kit already taking up space that was, you know, somebody else loved and I love them. So now I'm going to try to step into their shoes and it never fucking works. That is completely gone. And now I'm just looking at all these different drum setups going, I'd fucking like a little bit of that with a little bit of this. It's unreal. So I buy the thing and, you know, I'm supposed to walk back over to the doctor's office with a pair of drumsticks and, uh, you know get back in the car with my lovely wife and my beautiful daughter but um, now I bought a little drum kit so I got this giant box so I just ended up going alright fuck this I, I gotta take a picture of the box I just stood in the back garage uh, they got a parking lot behind the place and I was just like yeah I kind of bought something <laughs> and I just took a picture of the box with the sonar kit and I just wrote happy father's day to me and Nia's cool as shit she just wrote oh Jesus she's so fucking cool she doesn't give a shit right um, so she pulled up and then I opened up I'm like great we got the fucking little hatchback fucking thing here and I opened it up and the goddamn stroller's in there so I had to move shit around and do all this fucking stuff and I got to tell you, I cannot fucking wait. I'm moving into my uh, little studio thing tomorrow, and I cannot fucking wait. And as I mentioned, I've gone off the rails listening to these jazz drummers, and I am now convinced that Tony Williams is the greatest drummer of all time, and it's not even fucking close. I don't want to start a debate. I know I just did. The fucking guy's unbelievable. And I never understood what he was doing, other than that he was playing 90 million miles an hour on his ride cymbal. So I was listening to this album, uh, Miles Davis, Miles Smiles. And there's a song on there called Footprints. And it's one of those things that when I was younger, meaning like 46 or 47, before I started taking lessons, um, it would have just sounded like five guys playing five different songs. And that, that Tony Williams was doing this Keith Moon shit underneath it where he was just soloing or whatever. And I was, when I first was listening to it I, I the only thing i could kind of that was consistent was the bass line it was this bass line going gah, 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 da, da, da. and i was just counting that and i'm going okay it's in six it's in six and it's and i don't know what tony's doing and it's he's playing 90 mils, million miles an hour but what's amazing about the song is in the middle of it tony slows down and it's almost like he's like okay stupid it's in four all right, and here's where it is. Here's where beat two is, and here's where beat four is. And then after, then he only does that for a couple bars, and he speeds up again. It was like a drum class, and then it's like, oh my god, this guy's playing eighth notes, okay, against what this guy's playing. That sounds like it's in six, but it's really just almost like three against four. I know this is nerdy drum shit, but there's got to be a drummer out there that understands it. And then he's doing that metric modulation thing, which there wasn't even a fucking name for what he was doing to describe it where then as he's playing eighth notes that the eighth notes then he implies that that the, each one of those hi-hat hits is the two and four and plays the jazz that ding 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 ding, ding against that and then the e and the ta become the, the the fucking one and the three and he's playing that underneath all of their shit so the rest of the band, I guess, is sort of playing in an implied six while he's playing four underneath it, doing this metric modulation to the four. What fucking blows my mind is that he's playing at that fucking level, and at roughly the same year, I was joking with my teachers that that song by the Archies, Sugar, came out and was like a number one hit. He's doing that 
and you know they sell like one ninetieth of the fucking albums that a song ah sugar boo 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 ah honey honey do 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 you know I heard a story about that song that there's a keyboard solo which I mean I don't know shit about music I was consider a hacky solos when you take the soul when you take a solo and all you do is just play the the melody of the song so that was basically what the studio musician on keys was instructed to do so he's reading the sheet music and he was playing the solo to that song and evidently he started laughing when he was playing it because it sounded like like some five-year-old shit but of course that sells a zillion albums which brings me back to the golden state warriors Jesus, I'm going a long way. Where people are going, yeah, this is bad for basketball. Why is it getting such high ratings? I'll tell you why. Because the Archies outsell Miles Davis. There you go. Go fuck yourself. I'm done talking about the NBA. So anyways, I got a little sonar kit. I'm so fucking excited to play it. I can't wait. I'm not going to have any time. I won't have any fucking time to do it. But every once in a while, old daddy daycare, you know, my little princess. That's what I call her, my little princess. You know, she got the, you know, babies have those little cute little fat hands. Every morning I, I wake up, I put my little index finger in her, in her hand. You know, she, they always squeeze it. And then I bring her, I say, oh, good morning, princess. And I kiss her little, little fat baby hand. <laughs> you know, and you wouldn't think that within 20 minutes of that I could get in my car and have road rage. But I do. You would think at some point I could be like, you know what, you know. It doesn't get any better than that, but you know, I, I, you know, I, I end up having these fucking problems. Can it ever just? Sorry, I just did that with the, the recorder here. I'm on the road. I'm on the road here. I had to set it down here so I can type in my fucking password here. Um, but yes, I am on a a Tony Williams. Like I I disappeared down the rat hole. Just it's it's over. I I. I'm completely, after all of these years, always loving him, but not get. You know, I saw him live, and I had no idea what the fuck he was doing. I just knew he was one of the greats, and I went to go see him, and he had, you know, he had the yellow Gretsch kit. I mean, this was, when he died in 97, I probably saw him in, like, 92, 93, 91, somewhere in Boston. And, uh, I mean, I was in a room. There, there couldn't have been more than, like, 100 people there, 80, 100 people, a little jazz place. And I, I told you this before. And, and during the break, I could I walked up and I I just was looking at his whole setup. You know, he had the black dot heads, the big like f- you know fifteen inch hi hats and shit. I saw everybody. I told you I told you guys this before. I saw Louis Belson. And he just stood there next to his kit. And you went up and shook his hand. It was nuts. It was fucking nuts. Uh, and if anybody else knows any like. Uh, cool shit from that fucking era for me to listen to um, I mean it just fascinates me how like jazz was like the mainstream and then blues and R&B and then you know white people turned it into rock and roll or whatever that that ended up taking over and it's just like yeah well it was gonna because the direction if jazz just kept growing and growing and growing to the point that shit that I was just explaining to you guys it took me 30 years to understand what the fuck was going on just as a regular person, you're going to lose the mainstream at that point. But you got to give it up to those guys for having the balls to just say, yeah, well, fuck it. This is the direction we're going in. Um, they have to be like the level that they were playing. They had to know that half the fucking audience had no idea what was going on. Or you were just playing to a whole crowd full of musicians, right? I know I'm in way over my head. Who the fuck am I? Who, who am I? I just, I'm just a comedian who does a fucking podcast here.